In this video, you will learn the easiest way to build a rack with Python, ChromaDB, and OpenAI. If you've been looking for a tutorial about rack, you've probably noticed that some of these videos are like four or five hours long, and other videos are really technical. And that's exactly why I recorded this video, because with this video, you're gonna build your first rack in a bit more than 10 minutes. Let's get started. So if you want to build this rack together with me, the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, navigate to my website. That's this one. You can find a link to the website in the description of this video. And then you find here the code for this project. Just scroll to the bottom and then you will find here the requirements.txt, which includes all the libraries that we're going to need in this project. So just paste them in your requirements.txt. Then when pip install our requirements.txt and all the required Python packages will be installed on your computer. And the second thing that you need is the PDF file that you need as the basis for this rack. And the PDF file that I'm using, which you can use any file, is this one. So just navigate to the website. You can find the link in the description. And then click here on download. And what we're going to download is a file about growing vegetables in Florida. So this is the file. And in this file, you can all find all kinds of information about growing vegetables in Florida. I'm using this as an example file to build this uh, rack on. But as I mentioned, you can use any uh, PDF file. And then navigate to VS Code. Um, so we're going to use those two files, uh, filldb.py, just to fill the database, the semantic database, and ask.py. This is where you can ask all kinds of questions to the rack. Then what we also need is a directory called data. And in this directory data, you're going to put all the PDF files or just the one PDF file that you want to uh, work with. So as you can see, I um, put the um, PDF file about uh, growing vegetables in Florida here. Um, you can also include multiple PDF files in here. Um, this rack will work with all of them. And I also have a file here that's called .env. And this file um, is being included because I uh, use here load.env and because I include the .env package. And this is where I'm going to store my OpenAI API key because we're going to use OpenAI uh, in this rack. So just make sure that you uh, swap this uh, API key for your own API key and you're good to go. Now let's take a look at the actual code in order to see how this rack works. So I'm going to start with fillDB and that's the file that we use for filling the uh, database. So we use a few libraries. Um, I use uh, document loaders, uh, PyPDF directory loader, which will load all the PDFs from a specific directory. And then I also have recursive character splitter. And this is a library that we're going to use to cut this PDF in uh, small chunks that we can use in the rack. Um, then I've configured um, a data pod. So this is where the data is stored and a chroma pod. So this is where um, eventually the chroma database will be added. You see it's not here yet and it will be automatically created. Um, then we're going to initiate the chroma client. I'm going to use the chroma database. And if you want to learn more about using the chroma database, just navigate to this website, you can find the link in the description, and you can find all information on how to use this Chroma database. So for now, what I'm doing here is I'm just initiating the Chroma client, and then I'm initiating like the database. Um, so the name of my collection is Growing Vegetables. So you see that I use a method get or create collection, and this will either create the collection if it doesn't exist already, and if, it, if the collection is already existing, it will just use this collection slash database. Then uh, I'm loading the PDF file with loader by PDF directory loader. As I mentioned before, this is loading all the PDF files in the um, directory data. And then I'm uh, going to put them in raw documents. So this will be a list with the uh, content of every single document. And what you see then here is the text splitter. And this is uh, one of the few components that I use from Langchain. And if you want to know more about the text splitters that Langchain um, has available, you can um, find all the information in this document. And as you can see, Langchain has multiple different uh, text splitter uh, methods available. And the first one, uh, the recursive one, that's the one that we are using. This is the recommended way to start splitting text. You can find more information about using Langchain for Rack here. We are not using all of it, but uh, definitely check it out. So what I'm doing here is I'm just initiating the text splitter. You will see that the chunk size is 300. So this means that every piece of text uh, will be 300 um, characters. The chunk overlap is 100. Um, and then you see some other configuration here. Um, you can go all crazy with configuring this, but this is more or less the base configuration. And I see here that I split all the different parts of text in chunks and I used uh, text splitter and raw documents uh, in order to get there. 
If you want to know more about the chunks that have been created here, just print chunks and you will see how this list has been created and how big the chunks are, etc. etc. Um, then we're going to create three lists, documents, metadata, and IDs. IDs is basically a way to keep track of every single uh, chunk that we put in the database. So later you can also as well remove or um, edit these chunks. In this very simple rec, we're not going to do this, but we're going to um, add the IDs anyway. And now we add metadata, which says something about the source. So you can build the rec in a way that um, the rec tells you as well the source, etc., etc. And then documents, this is the important information where we're going to load in the chunks of text. Then you see here four chunk in chunks, and this is where we're going to uh, basically load everything in the way that uh, ChromaDB wants to see it. So you see that we load in the uh, chunk.page content, which is just the content of the chunk, chunk metadata, etc., etc. And then at the end of filltb.py, we just use collection.absurd, and this is where we're going to add the documents, the metadata, and the IDs. So this is filltb.py, and if you run it, you will see that the Chroma DB will be created here. Now you will see after running the script, a new directory has been created here, Chroma DB, which includes um, a Chroma database, uh, which has some kind of connection with SQLite 3. Then the second file is ask.py, and this is the file where we're gonna actually ask questions to the rack, and the rack is gonna answer these questions based on the documents. So you see that the top of the document is more or less the same. In this case, we use OpenAI, and we didn't use OpenAI in the other document. We use ChromaDB as well, and we use load.env, again, uh, to um, make a connection with the uh, API key here. Then we initialize data part. This one we are not actually using in this um, the file, but it's there anyway. And we use ChromaDB, and of course we're using this one. We initiate the ChromaDB object, uh, the Chroma client, and as well the collection, which is the database. And then this is where we get the actual query from the user. So what do you want to know about growing vegetables? And of course, if you want to change this rack to some other kind of content and you use uh, other PDF files, you're going to change this. Uh, so just make sure don't forget that. And then you see your results is collection.query. And um, you can ask multiple queries here, but for now we just include a list with one query, which is user query, which is this one. And now you see here, and results is one. Um, so just to keep this as simple as possible, um, I set results to one, and this will ensure that you always get only the most relevant result for your query, and that will be provided to the rack. But you can also set this to uh, like two, three, four, or five, or whatever. Just experiment with it and, and see what works uh, for your specific use case. Then this is where we're initi initiating uh, um, OpenAI. And then you see here the system prompt. You are a helpful assistant to answer questions about growing vegetables. Of course, make sure to change this as well in Florida. But you only answer based on knowledge I'm providing you. You don't use your internal knowledge and you don't make things up. If you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. And we will test this later and you will see that the rec actually does that, this when it doesn't know stuff or when uh, information is not mentioned in the PDF file. Then we present the data here, which is, of course, results, documents. You can as well add the metadata here. So that, and that if you want to do this, just copy this and, sh and change this one to metadatas. And then you can as well ask about the source of the information. And this is particularly useful if you use multiple sources because then you, you as well know where the information is coming from. For now, I'm not going to do this. And then you see here that we're making the actual call to uh, ChatGPT. You see that I'm working with GPT-4.0. Of course, you can change this to any model. Um, and of course, you can as well use a different model, for example, Olama here, if you want. Um, and then what you see here is that we provide a system prompt, which is what we have set here, and the user query. And the user query is just a question from the user that we ask here. And then uh, we provide here the response from uh, ChatGPT. So I'm going to test this rack and I'm going to ask two questions, one about content which is in the PDF file and one about content which is not in there. And then the rack should answer something like, I don't know. So let's take a look at the document. And if you look into this document, you will see that there is a section about composting, uh, which also mentions some benefits in a very specific way. So I'm just going to ask the rack, what are the benefits of composting? 
And now you will see that the result is composting highly benefits Florida's infertile native soils by yielding a manual-like organic fertilizer slash soil conditioner. And this is exactly what has been mentioned here in this uh, section about composting. So this works and you see that the rec is specifically answering with information about this uh, PDF document. Now, if you want to know a bit more about the inner mechanics of this rec, then I would really encourage you uh, to print as well the system prompt on the screen as well as the output. And then you will see exactly like the information that the rec gets from the semantic database from ChromaDB and how it uh, uses this information to provide you with this answer. Okay, let's now as well try to give the rec a question up, which is not related to growing um, veggies in Florida. So let's run it again. And it should now answer with, I don't know, because it has no information about this. And that's exactly what it does. Now, as I mentioned, you can find all the Python scripts on my website. There's a link to my website in the description of this video. I really hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more easy tutorials on working with large language models. And I hope to see you in my next video.